guess he went to Barnes and Noble. I promise it was out of my control, but this happened. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages eight, five, and three. I had to go to the mall because my husband broke his glasses and I had an hour to wait while LensCrafters fixed it and there was a Barnes & Noble there. So, this. And there's actually two more because I bought three copies of this book. In any case, this haul was mostly for me and that's always fun, but I will show you what I got. I have resolved to read more this year and so this is some of it. Of course, we haven't painted the walls and I haven't gotten the bookshelves up and this will just be yet another box of books somewhere, but we're just not going to tell my husband about that. Okay? Okay. I'll start with the biggest one first, and this is the um, Times Complete History of the World by Richard Overy. And um, I'm super excited about it. It was 30 bucks. It's really quite large, if you can see. See? Very big. Very heavy. Um, I looked a little bit ridiculous carrying all these books, by the way, through them all on the way back to LensCrafters. But I'm super excited about this book. And if you guys have middle schoolers or high schoolers, I think this is a really nice overview of world history. It starts out with early human origins from around 5 million years ago. And it goes through first civilizations and on. It has a chronological table here at the beginning of world events. And I like how they split it up through regions. So here you have Asia, Europe, Northeast and North Africa, other regions, and then cultural and technological advances as well. And it continues along. So if you go straight across, you can see sort of what was happening around the world. And it doesn't have this Eurocentric focus, which a lot of historical um, books do have. And so this timetable goes on for quite a while. And then it goes ahead and starts in with human origins. And it talks about both like geographical ideas as well as scientific ideas. So here you can see like early hominid skulls and migration patterns. And the book is just very well done. I like the size. I like how it's big, but manages to actually include information instead of just being pictorial, but still has beautiful maps and, and pictures of artifacts, etc. So here you have Persia, um, Germanic settlements of Western Europe and it goes straight on through through the rise of the Ottoman Empire here's stuff about Korea which I'm sure I don't know anything about because I had as many of us have a very Eurocentric um, historical education I like how it talks about areas and regions that I really didn't study too much so here it's talking about the struggle for the Baltic the Holy Roman Empire changes as um, France increases in power and I guess I'm showing you mostly the right hand side pages but if you can see there's quite a bit of text included also as well as maps and it gives us really like global perspective so here we have the United States Southeast Asia um, Palestine the Soviet Union China and in the back it has this very comprehensive glossary which is also a really nice feature in my opinion. And it has supplemental information that isn't always included in the um, text of the main book. For a historical reference book, I think indexes and glossaries are very, very important. So I'm super excited to use this. I really like that it has a global perspective. I don't know if you guys know, but I am super into mythology. Um, when I dream about alternate careers, I dream about becoming a mythologist. So if I ever do go back to school, <laughs> there are so many things I would go back to school for, but one of them would definitely be the study of mythology. As a child, I was obsessed with Joseph Campbell and um, read The Power of Myth by Bill Moyers. And I loved that whole series on television. And I just love mythology. I like, like mythology from obviously the Greek and Roman mythology that we all um, know and love, but I also love Norse mythology. It's so weird and archaic and the themes don't really follow um, sort of what we've been taught as our study of Greek mythology uh, leads us to believe. And um, I like Indian mythology. I don't know very much about other Asian mythology besides Indian. And this book covers loads of different cultural mythologies, including Native American, um, Chinese, a you know, South American. Here, you can uh, see it starts off with Greek and Roman mythology, and it includes classic artwork and um, quotations and 
um, historical references to where some of this mythology might have affected history into Celtic and Irish mythology, Germanic and Norse mythology, Arthurian mythology, which is one of my favorite um, lines of myth, uh, African mythology, which I know nothing about, which I'm super excited to learn more about, a Mesopotamian mythology, Middle Eastern mythology, Chinese mythology, Japanese mythology. Oh, isn't that lovely? Did you guys see that picture that was just there? Oh, look. What is this? This is Amaterasu. So this is Amaterasu, the sun goddess. Susano, the storm god, became so destructive that the sun goddess hid in a cave. The evil gods were delighted because the world was thrown into darkness, which hid their wicked deeds. The good deities eventually persuaded um, Amaterasu. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. The good deities eventually persuaded Amatis, Amaterasu to come out of hiding. That's such a beautiful painting. Um, yeah, so I love I love how uh, the story of myth is um, still relevant to our own uh, petty lives, which are not so petty at all, right? So the mythology of o Oceania, the mythology of the Americas here. So you have a lot of Native American mythology and artifacts if you guys are doing a study of Native America. And they just provide a lot of depth and breadth. I think mythology is so poignant and so relevant to our own little lives because no matter where we come from so many of the stories that define our morals and our um, deep emotional commonalities are, it's so fascinating to me how we are people no matter where we arise from and so many of the myths reflect that commonality they really show how we are tied together as a species and our common humanity. And um, I think it's really valuable in a way that transcends religion and faith. I think mythology shows us how we all come from the same stuff, how our emotional hearts are the same. Another book that I got is this, Quotes That Will Change Your Life. I'm a sucker for quote books. This was eight bucks, this was in their bargain section and um, I just flipped through them and I really like the quotes so here you have for example to live is so startling it leaves but little room for other occupations by Emily Dickinson and of course Walt Whitman do I contradict myself very well then I contradict myself I am large I contain multitudes if you had never condemned you would not need to forgive that's something to think on right before you embark on a journey of revenge dig two graves by Confucius I like that it is um, a little bit surprising and some of them that I know but some of them that I don't oh I like this one saintliness is also a temptation that's something for homeschool moms to remember so this is one of those books that I'll probably read include into my commonplace journal I am searching for the perfect commonplace book by the way I'm having difficulty finding one that's about eight and a half by eleven that has a hard back isn't outrageously expensive, but is thick enough that it should be able to carry me for at least six months or so. So if you have any recommendations on that, let me know in the comments down below. I'd also like it to be something that I could reorder so that I could have just one uniform set of books for my commonplace books. Anyway, so let me know if you have any suggestions for that. This is a book I'm super excited about. This is actually for my kids, and I think this is perfect for around third grade and up. So I bought this to be part of G8's art uh, curricula for next year and it was just eight bucks it's create your own masterpiece it's paperback but has this sort of sturdy cardboard cover and I really love it I think it has over 40 um, pieces of artwork the way it's designed each page is formatted this way where one page has the artwork with a little description of the art and the artist and then the other page has the beginning of that similar type of artwork for them to finish and so this one says to recreate it with a color palette and other ones say different things so here it's just create a seaside masterpiece inspired by Claude Monet and um, I really like the pieces they selected as well as the artists it they are artists that I would like my children to have some familiarity with and they're quite famous um, pieces of art so if you can see it's really interesting because the activities do 
um, vary a little bit. So they start off with a little element of the picture and then you continue it. So here they have a cubism type of picture and you um, create a self-portrait of yourself based on that. And um, I just really like how it invites creativity while also teaching them sort of the basics. And then the last few pages are just practice pages where they can doodle. So two ways I could think of using this book are one, just as part of your curricula. Another is to use it while you are doing read alouds. Um, another is to do it as a little bit of morning time and morning work. Um, but as you can see, the color reproductions are quite nice. The pages are quite sturdy, so they're not very thin, but they are not glossy at all. So um, crayon, marker, pencil will all have a good grip on this paper. But I'm super excited about that. And I bought three copies because I think as my children reach around the eight, nine-year-old stage, this will be really helpful. But I think this would be fun even for an adult. You know, I kind of wish I had bought four. Last but not least is the Illustrated Signs and Symbols source book. I was thrilled to discover this. It's $15. It's by Adele Nodizar, and I think it's really amazingly well done. I kind of wish it was hardback. Um, in the same way that I've been interested in mythology, I've always been interested in signs and symbology. It's so interesting, the meaning we invest in um, symbols and from everything to from the cross to the evil eye to a Jewish um, star to anything, our flags, um, the meaning we invest in symbols is so interesting. And so this is just a way of knowing like where things come from, the Masonic um, eye here, the uh, Hebrew alphabet, mandalas. So there's the, the swastika. The swastika is such a sad symbol in so many ways because it had such positive meanings before the rise of Hitler and the Nazis and the evolution of symbols and what it can mean to different cultures. And it's very interesting to me in the same way that mythology is. Um, where we come from really changes how we interpret different signs and symbols and animals. And um, so it goes through in, in this very orderly fashion, but it has so much information that's so interesting. So it has a whole section on birds too. Um, things that I totally didn't know. Um, I think one of the, the best things about a book like this is that it, it allows a different way of learning. So instead of telling people, okay, we're going to learn about the magpie and all the ways a magpie behaves and acts, you can also learn about how a magpie has affected mythology, how a magpie appears in stories, what the significance of using a magpie in a story might be, why you might want to use that as a symbol for your own creativity or your own beliefs or um, your own values. It's really interesting. So here it goes into the language of flowers, which is always really fascinating too. I think I have a book somewhere about like what different flowers mean when you give them to people. Stones. So if you're studying stones, they have that type of thing, um, different mazes, different um, chapels. So here it has St. Peter's Basilica, the Roslyn Chapel, um, which has a lot of Holy Grail mythology associated with it. So that was my Barnes & Noble haul, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for giving me your time. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more book hauls and videos about homeschooling and ADHD in particular. As always, I wish you the very best day.